Okay, we are live. Uh, the topic, as we discussed, is you know India's demographics and how it can support a boom economy. I have my own opinion about it, but uh, I don't want to <laughs> pass that on to you. Uh, we'll start with Sky. Sky, what do you think about about this topic in general? I have a lot of thoughts because I'm based in India, but as somebody from outside. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I think some of my opinions will be really strongly based on the like venture capital tax scene that I see in you know the Silicon Valley and whatnot, and that's kind of how I base some of the opinions and trends that I've been seeing um, in this space. So, I mean, Gen Z is here. You can tell just through so many things, from difference in branding to all kind of different uh, stores, and uh, you know names of things have been changing and whatnot. So I've been trying to pick up as much as that I can. Um, and I definitely see in the venture space, Gen Z is really interested in like the gig economy and having more than one um, position and holding multiple different types of jobs, whether it's freelancing and starting a company or, you know, a couple different things. They don't kind of want to do that traditional, you know, nine to five, um, even sometimes I'm seeing trends of folks not even interested in like college as they as they once were, um, more interested in getting that hands on experience, going to different types of internships, any anything that they can really get their hands on um, and learn and grow as fast as they can. Um, and again, with more than one or two positions um, and also the creator economy, I've seen a big kind of boom and shift in that space, especially when it comes to Gen Z. So um, that making their own products or, you know, starting an e-commerce store or something that's more tangible and show their authentic self. Um, so those are just a few things that I've picked up so far. Uh, so what do you think? They say that, uh, you know, that it's a huge consumer market. Um, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but, you know, like the earning capacity also impacts that consumer market, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not exactly. trying to be negative, here, but, but it's just that, you know, fine, it's a great consumer market, but in just in terms of number of people, what about in terms of, you know, the amount would, they can spend? Yeah, so that is interesting. I think Gen Z is, at least some of the trends that I've seen, they're probably less interested in income and more interested in impact. Um, so I've seen them really interested in like, again, the growth of their career and maybe creating things and whatnot. And, um, you know, they also do our spending. I'm not really sure how those two things are correlating very well. But um, I see, as you can see, a lot of the consumer markets are really targeted to this like really bright, um, like bold types of Gen Z marketing. Um, and you see like products kind of becoming like super hot and just get picked up off the shelves or, you know, through obviously e-commerce right now. Um, and I think that is so different than what, like what have the shopping and spending habits of millennials as well as baby boomers um, that you're seeing just such an uptick in what is being bought. <laughs> um but it's just very, you know, different. It's almost like, I don't want to say, I think it's more trend spending, I would say, than, um, you know, spending that makes sense. <laughs> like, for instance, they're not, they're not interested in saving money to buy a house, I would say. <laughs> Great. Uh, Antonio, what are your thoughts? So I think uh, there are many, many parameters uh, really, um, you know, um, um, outstanding uh, to me in India. You know, I think nowadays India is, is uh, I'm telling this also because I'm, I'm, I'm really focused on technology. You know, that's, that's my, uh, that's my um, part of my career, right? So uh, I think India is witnessing at some point, like in China, an um, unprecedented um, digitization throughout the, the, the country, you know. I think around 60% of the working class is um, is making digital tools and online platforms um, 
a, a crucial part of their daily lifestyles. So in, in this gym tour, I think uh, we, we're facing uh, also from outside a notorious shift in the in the shopping platform, you know, uh, and, and it's also natural. So I think visiting offline stores were days of the past, and most of the shoppers uh, now are turning mm -hmm. online, you know, even for for you know for basic uh, shopping like grocery, etc. So the e-commerce penetration in India is is 3.4 versus uh, 15 uh, and 20% in, in, in US uh, China. So I think I think this is really interesting. So because I think uh, the decision and, and digital transformation is 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 putting you know uh, you know hide you know the the, the country. The thing is that. Um, it's not the only parameter, you know. So uh, as long as population is growing dramatically, so, the, you know, uh, population is going to demand a, a good appraisal of resources, good infrastructures, good education, etc. And that's that's a challenge uh, to manage, you know, and, and also to, to keep... It's gone off. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> even even Arjun is unable to get in. He's showing on the right hand side as active. Yeah. He just messaged me saying he's unable to get his video going. Oh, in the very early stages, I actually was the chief of staff at Run the World, so I might be able to help a little bit. <laughs> yeah. When y'all uh, when you logged in, what did it say, Sky? Um, the top left hand corner kind of when you log in and you have to make sure you're on Google Chrome. Um, and then you just want to hit allow for the video and audio settings. Mm -hmm. um, and then once you kind of do those steps, you should be able to jump right in. And then also just make sure he logs in to like run the world with the email um, that he was joined as a speaker with. And uh, there's a button called allow. Yeah, yep, there should be. It's like a little pop-up that will be in the top left hand, usually. Um, that's through Chrome. Um, and it will ask you if you allow around the world to use your audio and your video settings. Okay, I'm just messaging you. No worries. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi. Okay, something happened with, with my oh, computer. Yeah. No worries. No, I'm sorry. I'm so, I'm so sorry. So. No yeah. worries. It's reloading everything in, in in the big one. So so hopefully uh, you know happily I'm I'm, I'm having a, a laptop you know because. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm so sorry. No, no. I, I was telling I was telling that. Uh, Hi, Hi, yeah. Hi, you hear me? Yeah. I was yeah. Telling, yeah. Great. Yeah, no. I, I was telling that it, it's also a challenge in terms of you know the the, the smart city framework. I think because um, they they need to put the the, the technology um, at the service of the of of the of that huge level of of population. Even if they uh, because I, I, I know that they're constraining you know the and also the fertility rates are are going down. I think. Uh, it's going to be complicated to to dramatically stop that that booming, and and we are facing 1.5 billion in 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 2030. You know, so it's it's a, I think, but 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 again, like like with the COVID 19, you know, I think it's a great challenge for everybody, for the whole world, with, because we are interconnected, and and also we need to try to get the balance, you know, in terms of also the e-commerce rules, market rules, population, etc. But in the end, I'd say that it's a great opportunity to to uh, to show to the world uh, that they they because I think they have the resources, the human capital for sure, to combine a, a very advanced um, you know a high level of uh, education you know uh, levels and also high level of specialization. But uh, you know that combination need to be explored because uh, I think that could convert India in one of the most critical and important, um, you know, countries uh, around the world. 
you know. But it's complicated to combine that because many countries they have the specialization, many engineers, many many uh, uh, technical people, uh, coders, programmers. But 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 with a lack of uh, you know a, a strong level of liberal arts or you know level of of uh, critical thinking etc. And in the end, that that's not good for for uh, for a country. If you don't have that, probably you're gonna be kind of the factory of the world or just with just um, this kind of uh, approach. In in terms of uh, you know how things are right now. How do you think how best can businesses use the workforce we have now at the current level of education and the current level of uh, specialization? I mean, you know, in a mass scale, I don't mean the niche one percent, two percent, not that, but on a broader scale, how how best can it be utilized? It is for me the the question. So. Um, Okay, the, the good thing is that it's like they're, they're um, you know, in India they're focusing uh, a lot on being uh, programmers, uh, you know, engineers, etc. And that's really cool for the for the economy. We are the new economy. The economy is is right here, you know, because many many positions we, we need to look for this kind of positions in India because we don't find it in in in, in Europe, no, or or, or Latin America. So that that's cool. I think that they are kind of ready um, at some point for the new economy, but I think it's not enough for for a for a great country. So it's kind of a shortcut. You cannot only be. It's it's also things I'm telling in Spain or other countries. It's okay. You need to be uh, you, you to learn code, how to code, but it's not. Everything you know. Okay, you learn how to code. You learn Python. You let no uh, JS or or JavaScript or you know or, or IoT or or machine learning, and that's all. And, and you are finally a corporate slave. Uh, so for if, if we talk about you know in, in macro uh, parameters, you know education is much more than that. But but okay, but it's 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 a interesting approach because you 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 have millions tons of of millions and, and you need to also to to be pragmatic and to offer positions and jobs to to uh, to everybody so not everybody's going to be a doctor or or a lawyer so i think it's it's a good idea using also technology in terms of uh, um you know it's it's a good approach to to educate people and to offer them positions internally or out of the country or you know remotely so but it's it's uh, as as a um, country plan is not enough. It's okay, but it's not enough. You, you, I think they need to work in a on a on a much more holistic uh, approach uh, if they want to really surpass you know um, other experiences in the past. <clears throat> sure, uh, Arjun, what are your thoughts on the topic in general? And overall, hey, good to uh, uh, you know finally attend and be in this. Uh, and thank you for getting me inside. I struggled at uh, getting in, so that shows how tech technologically uh, adept I am. But uh, having said that, I think uh, my views on this, you know, having started a company that is in um, sort of the employability space uh, in one way because we connect people to jobs uh, for employers. And we focus, and our, our mantra is obviously um, looking at connecting um, uh, the talent within a business into multiple opportunities. We see this across the board uh, in multiple businesses, uh, across automotive, pharmaceutical, telecommunications, where India is still at a place where, at a mass level, and I think the question was currently what is the, the demographic dividend uh, doing and what are, what are we uh, speaking through in terms of reality? It is a lot of data laden jobs. It's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, some of mass produced technology skills that are uh, being seen as the, as the way to go. But what's the future? The future, like any country uh, that has developed, has to look at the startup ecosystem and has to look at the the 
the Gen Z, uh, the the the, the uh, new you know gig economy that we are seeing across the world starting to uh, take momentum in India as well, right? You see an employee who wants to work for uh, six months, nine months, or a year, not really worried about uh, you know financial security as you were saying uh, earlier. I could hear you, but I can say anything. But I think that's right. People don't uh, really. Uh, give a toss about having uh, a home or a car, but um, have um, mediums uh, to satisfy themselves in in terms of security that are very different from what uh, we perceive, right? So I think that that's the order of what the demographic is uh, going to want and is going to push for. So work is going to change. The nature of work is going to change. The nature of the workforce is radically shifted. And uh, COVID has presented itself, uh, uh, you know, uh, in terms of giving every country uh, sort of a hyper drive into the digital economy. I think that's where India is really lagging from an education framework to allow us to take benefit. But what countries like India do is latch on to what's available because of lack of frameworks. Right? It's despite this that we're going to be able to succeed, um, uh, uh, despite infrastructure, despite the fundamentals of education, like in first world countries, we see uh, we're going to use what we have to develop and sort of move forward. I think that's the order of the day. Where we find uh, uh, this this uh, niche, uh, you know, not the one to five percent, but the 95% moving to is uh, technology skills or technology aided jobs that is going to be uh, the, the shift. How it's going to pan out is just going to be, uh, the, you know, need driving this change. And that's my take. So, so this is a general question for all of you. From a policy perspective, what do you think needs to be done? Like if we see economies, they normally tend to move from, you know, agrarian to manufacturing to something else and then eventually move to the knowledge economy, right? And that's a long movement. It hasn't happened for sure here yet. But, you know, from a policy perspective, what can be done to, you know, at least what are the places where you need to start working on? Well, yeah, as mentioned before, you know, I think not only India, so many, many countries need a, re a, a real uh, plan, uh, you know, um, in, 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 in many senses, not only education, but uh, and it's complicated to also to, 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 um, to um, to get unity into diversity, you know, it's complicated. But I think what is clear is that we are facing a mathematization of society by all means, and I think it's going to be key for for many countries, um, you know, higher level of of uh, you know of mathematics, you know, and, and knowledge in science, etc. And I think it's it's because of the you know the. The, that, that huge amount of people, you know, I think it's it's uh, it's complicated. But but uh, now we have the online tools, so probably it's it's uh, the plan uh, should contain you know uh, access to the internet uh, for everybody and programs for everybody, not not only for the for the wealthy people, and and that's that's something the the government probably and and this uh, uh, civil society should structure. You know, to to educate constantly, you know, people from 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 early early age, uh, and also you know, uh, grown ups and people in, in their fifties and sixties. So probably it's it's another challenge because you know, for that people probably to to uh, to really get the profound knowledge, um, you know, in terms of of uh, IoT, uh, machine learning. And you know, and computers in general, it, it, it is it is it is it is a, a huge challenge. But it, I think it's the only way. You know, also um, uh, using technology to organize much better uh, people and 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 to uh, and to be able to deliver um, you know a wide variety of services 
to 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 that kind of people you know for for instance in and, and i think in india is 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 very similar in china there are more uh, the, than um, 150 uh, cities uh, you know with more than 1 million people so you know in india i think it's it's quite similar so that that is a challenge you know you know because also there are um, um, cities with the same population of, of Spain, so around, uh, you know, 50, 55, uh, you know, 40, 45 million people, in, in, in like, like in China, Chongqing, for instance. So uh, we have the technology. Uh, probably there are other alternatives, but, uh, but I think we have the technology and we need to be able to, to move forward with the technology, with the automatization of processes. And, and, and also, I think, for the pandemic, uh, and, 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 and new pandemics, uh, they say, the scientific say that are coming. So we need, we need to be able to have a, some kind of, of, of prophylactic, uh, you know, way of, of operating in cities, like, uh, with, with the, I think with the cloud services, et cetera, if it's, it, it's everything, you know, um, uh, in, in every single corner, I think we can, we can be uh, operative. Also, um, you know, containing the contagious and, and, and problems, you know. Again, I think technology and automatization, it's part of the solution. For sure, it's not, it's not the, the, the whole solution to, to, to this challenge, how to deal with this kind of uh, um, tremendous uh, um, population, but it's part of the solution. But, and, and, and in theory, we, we have that. But not in reality. If you, if you, I've been. Tra- I'm not a good expert of, of India, but I've been traveling a lot across many, many cities: Bombay, Bangalore, many others. And 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 you need to you need to organize the population. Of course, if you have programs to cut down on 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 on, on that huge level of of. Uh, you know, booming, it's, it's also okay, but you need to manage, you know, you need to, and also you need to preserve, uh, which is another challenge, the fundamental rights, the human rights. And, and that's complicated because I think democracies, democracies are working really cool when, when, when you are dealing with a small level of population, but when you deal with uh, huge levels of populations, you know, uh, the temptation is, okay, let, let's, let's, let's come up with a kind of a, some kind of soft or hard dis- dictatorship because also we need to move people around and to control people, et cetera. And if it's a democracy, it's going to be complicated to also, if we are facing a, a pandemic or, or, or a huge problem, it's going to be complicated to really bring under control all the people. Sky, what are your views in terms of policy? Yeah, what, I what mean, I I think that some, I think definitely comes down to just, I mean, in my own, my own views of education and again, technology and access to the internet and um, looking at these inequalities and especially wealth building inequalities as well. It's like, how can we look at the distribution of wealth and what tools and access to these tools can we provide and how do we go about like bringing out those programs so we can start building better wealth um you know within these smaller um communities and then really kind of making sure that we can we can lift up because you know we're we're only as strong as our weakest link so when you're really looking at the at it as a whole um really looking into the into the 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 actual like hard issues of, you know, who is suffering and how can we how can we build them up in ways that we can do that with whether it is um, through policy or what what it may be. Um, you know, even in the states, there's so much wealth inequality. You know, even coming out to Silicon Valley, I was, you know, uh, did not live this life. You know, when I growing up and I had no idea even what venture capital was or entrepreneurship and my mind completely shifted and just seeing this bubble of knowledge here um, has opened my eyes on how we can re- actually redistribute that into a you know, global scale. Um, and one of the initiatives that I do work on is helping entrepreneurs like get access to funding or access to folks that they um, need to be getting in front of and 
um, helping these innovative ideas because they come from folks that do struggle, um, you know, and people that have been on the, on the forefront of hardships and burden. And that's where you see these innovative ideas. Um, so that's kind of where my ideas stem from around this. Great. Arjun, your thoughts on this? Firstly, Sky, you should help me uh, raise money then. My, my, <laughs> my <laughs> Arjun, I I I'm an entrepreneur and I struggle at this. So, uh, <laughs> that yes. is my specialty. <laughs> we, should, we should be talking. So yeah. anyway, let's just go on the side. Now. But, uh, you know, I think the, the, the idea is that uh, when, I, when I talk about technology being so pervasive, uh, I'm a big believer in uh, uh, shifts and artificial intelligence has created a shift that is um, unprecedented uh, in terms of a revolution, um, evolution, call it what you want. But uh, it's literally like what, what uh, you know, uh, I guess, uh, you know, discovery of uh, uh, steel did to, to the world or metal did to the world and sort of changed the, the balance uh, or fire, you know, so it's, it's, it's really something that has created a new wave. Uh, it's also uh, changed the, the outlook of the way businesses are functioning today. So demand governs supply and the way we um, are, are going to see more people as employable and, uh, you know, see gainful employment is just through the shift of the lens of technology. So I might be very myopic in my opinion, primarily because I see it um, uh, from from um, where businesses are starting to uh, discover their growth patterns, uh, be it hospitality or be it um, uh, the automotive sector, uh, be it e-commerce and, and this huge digitization that exists there. Uh, India, you know, 2022, I think it's going to be the, the uh, youngest population in the world with the average age of 19. So the demographic dividend was something that I had known early in the day. It says that, uh, you know, a gross enrollment ratios into the, uh, uh, you know, education, higher education sectors are really low. Primary education, you know, is definitely a place where a lot of focus has to be given for us to get the fundamentals right. But having said that, since we have, you know, this beautiful statistic of having an average age of 19, what are we going to do with it? How do you how do you start shifting the gears? So what happens in India technically is you have this leapfrogging using, say, 5G or mobile devices or, uh, you know, access to, um, you know, hardware and software that is more pervasive that allows people to uh, build into figuring out how to survive, right? And that's the huge quotient of the, the, the uh, mass, uh, you know, production of people and opportunities that's going to transpire over the next decade, right? And that, that if you look at it, is just this, this need to survive and this hunger that is going to drive people, uh, what the VCs and the VCs and, and uh, the, the uh, investors are going to see as an opportunity to invest because there's an upside when when it's a tipping point, when there's an inflection point. So uh, you'll see that despite our governance and our you know flux in in uh, regulation, uh, you'll see the investment uh, you know coming in because there's always this opportunity. In fact, I was on a, a call with a, a, a you know senior member of Temasek uh, yesterday. Uh, as part of the fund that uh, has invested in our company, uh, we had the opportunity to talk to a person who, uh, you know, was part of Temasek, and they're like a three hundred billion dollar fund. And the person is, is you know, loves India, stays in India, is an Indian, um, uh, and um, the opportunity in India, right? It's not because, and I saw this as deeply rooted. It's not because they had a fund and they were running it in India. It's because they believe in the India story. Uh, it's a degree of optimism, I'm sure. I'm sure there's a degree of uh, realism also that comes in at some point saying, you know, where is this governance going to take us? Because it's government, it's businesses, it's sort of the, uh, you know, uh, uh, consumer uh, uh, trying to sort of keep pace with all of this at one level or the population trying to keep pace with it. But I think the, the private sector and the uh, uh, public sector at one level are starting to... Uh, merge to give this opportunity a new wave despite 
government regulation and policy, right? I, I think that all that shifts because, you know, I have an opportunity to go and, you know, flip my business and headquartered in the U.S., but I'm still uh, a business run out of India. I have a subsidy in the U.S., but at the same time, you know, for benefit of talking to, um, you know, a hundred more VCs, isn't that the best thing to do, right? Logically, but um, why would I then have this this India operations providing me uh, the benefit of great minds, good product thinking, great data science, and it's all here. It's we a company built out of India. So I, if I just take this myopic view when I transfer it across, you see tons of businesses, um, you know, surviving and then you see them thriving, but the surviving is most important. You have to go through that that factor of pain uh, to be able to start delivering new value across uh, uh, the spectrum. And I think the Gen Z, or the gig economy, as we call it, the, the whole uh, new age workforce, right, is going to catapult and propel our, our um, you know, uh, economy into uh, the future. And that, that, I think, is the book. So... That's my take. So uh, for everyone, this is again an open question for all of you. Is COVID-19 is obviously a setback, not just in India, but, you know, across across the world. So what is what, how do you see, you know, bouncing back from this? Like, of course, there's technology and it's because of technology that a lot of things continued during the pandemic. But, you know, we also need to understand that, uh, People like us who can work online, that number is very little, right? So, I mean, again, not just in India, this is across the world. Not too many people will uh, can really work from home. So how, how do you bounce back? Of course, you have spoken, Antonio, about vaccines reaching not just the rich countries, but, you know, it's all countries you get together to ensure that the vaccines reach remotest corner of Africa, remotest corner of Asia. But, but do you see that as the only solution? Because you have to bounce back, right? I mean, it's been a long time now. No, of course, as mentioned before. Um, so I think we should combine, and I know it's complicated, two options to not only for this pandemic, you know, so we need to be able globally to improve the, you know, the medical and, and health assistance by all means. Also with technology, we, we, we can also come up with, with businesses, uh, you know, uh, offering consultancy um, services in terms of, uh, of, of medicine and health to, to, to a wide variety of people and tons of people. You know, I think it's uh, the physical access to, to, um, to hospitals, especially in places like, like uh, or, or cities, in in India, it's, it's it's quite complicated. Even if you have resources, it's it's complicated to organize the access, etc. And you need to be prepared, especially with pandemics, how to be prophylactic and and also how to how are you going to uh, to get capillarity for everybody again with technology, uh, combining physical and online uh, access. I think it's the way to to um, to deal with with, with that. Um, and, and, and we, we have a technology and the vaccines and, the, and the research and, 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 uh, on vaccines, et cetera. I think, uh, you know, uh, if, if we don't, uh, and I think it's happening at some point. So some countries are now helping, uh, with, with the resources to, to India, right? So probably we need to improve that. We need to reinforce that globally, not only for India, for many other countries, because if we want to really stop this pandemic and we want to prevent new ones coming, we need to think up globally. This is not about, okay, in Spain or in your European Union, we are safe, or in US or in, in Japan. No, you're not going to be, uh, unless we stop the world as we know it, you know, like, like people traveling, uh, you know, without any restriction, etc. So uh, everybody should be safe, and 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 the world is 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 uh, you know a huge diversity. But we need to turn that diversity into unity. You know, that's that's really cool. You know, uh, theoretically speaking. 
it's very complicated when, when you when you want to really uh, be practical and etc. But but I, again, uh, um, to me, technology is not God, but but close. <laughs> I think we we have we have that that option we have that option you know and uh, to 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 really improve many 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 things uh, it's a new kind of ur urbanization you know um, and affecting um, all all verticals that's that's the that, I think that's one of the potential uh, solutions and ways to really move move forward but it depends also of politicians etc and and only one 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 thing regarding the investments because in the end investments um, are generating wealth uh, I think investors I'm, I'm investor you know a small investor but I'm investor as well and one thing you need to you you, you want to see is clear rules and 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 stability if you see clear rules and stability for sure you need to love or you need or you should dig into the culture much more it's not only about the money it's about the smart money and the smart money means you understand you love the culture you 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 touch the ground at the airports uh, you know in, in in the country you're investing etc so um, but yeah so that this these are my views sky what are your views on you know how do we bounce back from Again, it's not just for India, but across. Yeah, I mean, I, think, I know that not everybody can work from home, but I think that we're definitely seeing a shift of people not wanting to go back to the office and maybe not feeling safe and um, just globally really wanting that freedom of what kind of working from home might be able to look like if, if possible. Um, so I know just around where I am, like folks at Uber or Lyft or some of these large corporations are leaving their high paying jobs and going elsewhere because they don't want to go back to the office. Um, and I think that that also shows a lot of inequalities around like how frontline workers and folks that are on the ground during this pandemic, um, you know, they, they have, they couldn't even think to have that ability to be able to work from home and, you know, um, keep themselves safe. So it's kind of almost like a big, um, how do I want to call it? Just a huge gap of um, reality of really what's going on. Because folks have been able, some of these folks have been able to be sheltered and, you know, protect themselves and, you know, just wear their mask, go out, get vaccinated, wanting life to go back to normal. Um, so I think that there is going to be a lot of repairing as in kind of almost like PTSD. And I know lots of nurses, doctors, they're have holding such a burden on them of what they just went through, this traumatic experience. Also, you know, as well as technologists, um, you know, my husband worked for Stanford. He was, you know, 24 seven on the, like on the phone, on the computer, coding, trying to get things up and running for vaccine clinics and everything. People are burnt out. Um, and now we're kind of saying, all right, let's start up. Let's go. Like, let's move forward. And um, we have to like kind of really balance what, what that looks like moving forward. Arjun, your views? Well, so I agree with that, uh, you know, uh, uh, in terms of uh, people and sort of this uh, divergent set of, uh, you know, values or outlooks. Uh, one is uh, the, the shelter and the other is the people who have to provide the shelter, right? So what's the risk in that? But I guess, uh, you know, it's if I, I just give you an example that Apple... Uh, in the future, if you think of it, what does Apple want to be as a company, right? And this huge economy by itself running there. Apple wants to be a healthcare company or sees itself as a healthcare company. So companies are shifting even in their their sense of what they are going to be uh, tomorrow. And uh, look at us. Uh, is it because of the pandemic that we're talking online or virtually and sort of connecting in this mode? Or is it more convenient? There's less travel and there's less... Uh, you know, uh, uh, logistics. But at the same time, what are we missing out on? The interaction from an emotive standpoint where you're sitting across the table, 
you're actually sensing the other person's uh, uh, you know uh, voice and uh, you know uh, neuro linguistics as you would call it i think that part of it is where the, the disconnect occurs and we're going to have to work through figuring out the the upside to not traveling and not being in the same room uh, but being able to connect at any point at any time whatever time zone and have this conversation which is a lot more convenient those barriers broken so i think the the uh, the, the shift is uh, real for and when when we were talking about economies and sort of the untouchable nature of some places where we thought nothing happened like singapore as a city is so safe and secure they with all their security went through uh, multiple challenges right so i i'm i'm just not i'm certain that um, this has just opened the eyes of everybody everywhere that they um, can can feel the pain so we need to go we need to device new ways to live and um, continue um some of it is also going to have to move back to this sort of called hybrid model as you see where people have to figure out like you want to have a meal you're not going to sit and have a meal virtually you're going to have a meal with uh, two other people and because that's sort of what you do right uh, the, the isolation isn't good for human beings uh, we we as a, as a as a race need to connect and you know uh, be with each other so i think that's going to push us into a new way of a way of life but think about technology and think about how fast vaccines have come through right uh, we used to take 5 7 you know 8 years before and now we push the bar uh, to to make something work and is it perfect of course not we're going to have naysayers we're going to have criticism but technology allows us to do a lot of things and that that's why the comment of saying that it's, it's not god is true don't don't let it sit on your head and rule uh every uh action of yours but it's close and it's it's providing us this access to uh, do so many things so differently um sometimes even dumb down and simplify our ways of life so i think the the gen z the sort of the uh, uh, you know uh, new uh, worker uh, as we see it is free of all the clutter and that's going to be the The, the the change that that the world is going to be a lot of simplification a lot of uh, ease of uh, connecting a lot of uh, uh, non traditional ways of looking at things that will become uh, par for the course so i i see the world moving and shifting to something a lot better and i hope it's a lot lot uh, more uh, uh, diverse you know humane this is uh, what we've gone through right now thanks so much sir that was a very way to good way to sum it up yeah uh so that it's a lot yeah yeah no, it's always good it's always good <coughs> uh that's all time we have sky thank you so much for your time antonio thank you so much for your time and arjun thanks for joining us as well it was a lovely thank conversation you. Yeah. Thank, you so thank you so much you guys. sky you got to get in touch with me <laughs> i will no <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye right. everybody. Bye. 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 B